Hi there and welcome to the August solar update. It's a little bit late this month, uh, mainly because I can't get to my octopus stats online. Every time I seem to go into the energy uh, area that I've used, I get like an error code, a bit like this. Uh, I have phoned them up and they say it's probably just the server needs resetting or my account needs sort of looking at. I think it's mainly because I moved my seg this month. So yeah, so this month I've moved to Scottish Power um, and I'll talk a bit more about that later on. Uh, so a full month with Scottish Power exporting, which means not four pence, but 12 pence now. And my first full month with uh, Octopus Intelligent. So back on the seven and a half P rate for instead of four hours on go, now six hours uh, on Intelligent. So that's been pretty good as well. So let's get started. But before we get into the stats, let's just remind ourselves of my solar panel system. Uh, so 14 Jinko 390 watt panels, uh, totaling 5.4 kilowatts, 10 on the south and four on the east, and a solar edge four kilowatt inverter. So that's the solar side. On the battery side, we've got the three kilowatt AC inverter and the eight kilowatt Gen 1 Give Energy battery. And then of course, I've got a few extra bits and bobs such as the My Energy Eddy heating the hot water, the Harvey and the Herb, and the Hypervolt EV charger. So August, 2023, we ended up with uh, 703.5 kilowatt hours for the month. Uh, better than last month, and we'll compare that in a moment. But these are the values for each of the days. Um, with an average per day of 22.69 kilowatt hours. It wasn't an amazing month, um, but I knew it wasn't going to be, especially off the back of how bad kind of July was. Uh, and we started the month fairly badly straight away on the 1st of August when it was raining. On the, That was probably the day I videoed the July's uh, figures. And we only kind of had 14 on that day. Um, and then we had a few days sort of sitting around the 20 kilowatt hours and then we had a really bad day on the 5th of august just over five kilowatt hours and a few days under 20 the 8th there and the 14th and the 18th and the 29th as well um, as i say the average um well you can see kind of where the average was around the kind of 22 line here um, coming through there were some good days only two over 30 kilowatt hours though two days next door to each other the 9th and the 10th uh, and then the other sort of four or five days were kind of over 25 you know 29 28 uh, 29 again there and the rest were kind of all under that really so an okay month but as you'll see in a second not as good as last year so here we are in august uh, 703 compared to last year's which was 783 so 80 kilowatt hours less than last year uh, that's quite a bit actually you know that's kind of three or four days worth really uh, and as you know the the month pre the previous in july was worse so we've come up a little bit 676 and now 703 this month but as you all probably know as you can see last year september we're now going to be on the way down um the evenings will kind of draw in a bit um hopefully it won't be well it would be interesting actually to see if it is going to be as low as um last year at 5 30 for september or if it's going to be a little bit higher so in the first week of so of september we're going to have a good week of sun uh, or we are in the east anyway depending on where you live um, so we'll have to see what happens really but still the standout month uh, this year obviously has been 835 in june which was my kind of best uh, month ever right let's have a look at how i used the power so our first stop is the online hypervolt ev charger dashboard uh, in august i used 88.895 kilowatt hours that went or came out of the hypervolt and went into the ev or evs as we have two of them um yeah all this was from solar there was no kind of overnight um charging on this uh, this was all kind of solar based uh, a little bit more obviously than what we used in july we only put 71 kilowatt hours through the uh, hypervolt and obviously we did a lot more in june we did 172 um, that was mainly because of the amount of uh, solar we were getting in june uh, yeah so 
kilowatt hours in August used on the hypervolt. Right, so now onto the My Energy uh, with the eddy heating the hot water. So the boiler's been turned off again uh, for the month of August, and we're just heating the hot water by the eddy. So the eddy used 130.8 kilowatt hours of solar um, to heat the hot water. Uh, most of those days it was fairly good I just remember me telling you that 5th of August was absolutely terrible and it didn't we didn't put anything in the hot water that day um, but the great thing is if you're on a cheap tariff overnight then you can obviously uh, schedule the eddy to heat your hot water via the sort of immersion tank overnight on cheap rate if you want to give it a little boost or you can use some of the battery up as well um, if you've got sort of a lot of or a fair bit of battery left that you don't not worried about and you want to use up then you can just charge the uh give it a boost and uh, charge the uh, hot water up a bit as well so 130 kilowatt hours by the eddy so this is the um give energy cloud dashboard just showing the whole month so here i've got it set to the month and showing what went into the battery so solar to battery and then grid to battery over the month i've kind of set the minimum um overnight percentage to be kind of 30 percent um just because i want to sort of wake up with that sort of value in the morning just in case it's a a dodgy day uh, sometimes my son will stay up late and sort of game and sometimes it will dip below that so some then the uh, sort of battery will kick in and import some on cheap rate to top it up a little bit to that 30 percent obviously 5th of august as you remember that was a bad day so a kilowatt and a half went in the battery it's not that much really i mean 1.9 kilowatt hours and then like 0.75 kilowatt hours so a little bit 11.28 kilowatt hours of cheap rate electric um, at seven and a half pence went into the battery um, so you know 80 pence worth kind of thing uh, over the month so that's not too bad and then you've got the solar to battery as well if we actually just look at the home in general you can see that how much went to the, the battery to home and again the grid to the home as well so as I can't get to my data on Octopus Energy and they haven't yet uh, created a bill for me, I'm just going to have to use um, the details that are in the Give Energy uh, dashboard if you add them in yourself. So you can do this. Actually, I've done a video about this. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link to that video in the description uh, and a pop out right now if you can see these pop outs. Um, basically, this is the uh, these are the months and the kilowatt hours that I've used uh, so far. So August, it said I used 50.37 kilowatt hours uh, imported from the grid. Now I can't tell you at the moment how much of that was overnight cheap rate and how much was day rate, but I imagine probably 90, 95% of that was uh, nighttime where I had to just use um, a little bit of the, um, overnight electric where I knew there was a bad day coming up so I put a little bit more into the uh, battery basically so this is what it looks like on the octopus energy app so you can see the odd peak there at the beginning of the month where it was kind of quite bad um, on the fourth sort of fifth as well so five kilowatt hours five kilowatt hours when I did sort of put a bit more into the battery and then there were just days where there was just one or two uh, kilowatt hours going in mainly just because I had it set to uh, keeping 30% in the battery overnight. So just in case, well, I really, I just wanted to wake up with some left over in the battery, to be honest. But yeah, so 50 kilowatt hours in total uh, imported. So as I'm now kind of in charge of recording the export, as I don't have it with Octopus anymore, um, now with Scottish Power, um, I have to kind of make note of... Uh, the export and write down the kind of readings and things like that on the meter but this is coming from give energy and in august it says i actually sent 92.11 kilowatt hours to the grid so we're going to use that in the calculations so 50.37 kilowatt hours for grid import i've got no data on whether that was uh how much was night or day rate uh exported 92.11 kilowatt hours at 12 pence a kilowatt hour on scottish power that gave me 11 pounds and five pence for the month a lot lot better than 
4.1 pence uh, on octopus gas still no gas being used although the rate has now dropped to 7.4 pence per kilowatt hour which is good news for when the boiler does actually get switched on uh, but standing charges have gone up a little bit for me um, especially my electric on uh, intelligent so they've gone up a few pence a day now. So the gas was 27.47 pence a day, 31 days, gives us eight pounds and 52. And the electric on Octopus Intelligent is now 42 pence, well, 42.01 pence a day, times 31 days for August, gives us 13 pounds and two pence. So the total standing charge is now 21.54 for the month. So all in all, August wasn't a bad month. At least it was better than what July was. Uh, and moving to Scottish Power for the export at 12 pence so far has been pretty good. Um, they have not given me much communication really about when I was going to switch over. It was actually only Octopus that told me, sorry to say you're leaving and this is going to be your kind of start date. But the process of moving to Scottish Power was quite easy because it was all done online. I just had to issue some details like my schema and my mpan and things like that and you know the best thing about it though really was that from that initial reading of my export scottish power took that value and were paying me from then even though they hadn't even approved my seg by then so it was good because you know i didn't even know it hopefully i was going to get approved but i didn't know if i was going to and I was, so I've got some extra money coming. Uh, the only downside to the Scottish Power is you only get paid uh, twice a year, whereas Octopus, obviously, you would get paid every kind of month or so or whenever you put your kind of readings in. So that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. If I get hold of that sort of data from Octopus, I'll kind of fill in um, the extra kind of costs and things like that and see where I ended up on the month. But, you know, with that sort of export from Scottish Power of kind of around £11 and the standing charge for the electric being about £13, it was quite nice to see that, you know, the export nearly covered the electrical standing charge. But as I said before, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you did like the video and I'll speak to you soon.